Good evening, everyone. I'm so glad that you're able to attend our site supervisor panel presentation this evening. During this uh, first session of the evening, we have representatives from five internship sites. And uh, those of you who can see the screen, you'll see on the screen we have someone from Novo Nordisk, Santa Clara County Library District, Trinity School, Santa Mateo County Library, and Hope International University. Uh, my picture is down below there, Dr. Pat Franks, and uh, Melissa LaFranchise, the person uh, to whom the credit goes for setting up this entire panel presentation, is the student research assistant. You'll see her picture there on the right. Right now we're going to turn to our very first presenter, Rochelle, who is going to speak to you about the internship opportunities she has available. Rochelle, go ahead. Okay, thank you, Dr. Frank. Um, my name is Rochelle Stern, and I'm an information professional with Novo Nordisk Incorporated. It's a pharmaceutical company, and it's global wide. Uh, my office is in Princeton, New Jersey, and that is in the central New Jersey area. Um, the, the company itself is headquartered in Denmark. And I think that we were on the um, on the slide where we have a photo. Am I right? Yes, of the team. Okay, thank you. Um, yes. So, the, as you can see, the photo here we have about um, 40 librarians pictured here, um, and, and that's not all the librarians from the U.S. I can say that we are indeed a global company because these are all the librarians from the U.S. affiliate, China, and Denmark. And every year we get together and we talk about our work and we, we work with each other every day. So it, it indeed is a, a truly global company. Um, the company itself, it, it has a uh, whole portfolio of insulin, and so it sort of built as a diabetes company, but we also uh, promote um, hemostasis products and growth hormone products. Um, the information professional uh, job is actually getting into things like big data and analysis where we um, are looking to support business decisions. So that's sort of where I think corporate librarianship is going. Um, so we are working really hard to meet up with those needs. So we can go to the next slide. Um, this is just some internship information for you. Um, the, some of the duties of the intern would be literature searching, article retrieval, news alert, and that's of course in the uh, medical area. So it's searching through uh, databases like Medline, Embase, Biosis, uh, current contents, and so on. Um, also, um, the intern would assist with literature analysis and uh, text data mining, and also with uh, training internal colleagues to use our information resources. And then at the end of the internship, we usually have the intern present a special project to our staff. So it's something that maybe we might not know, or um, something in that you might present in a new drug class, or it could be you know just something in that you're interested in. And some of the benefits I listed include um, that it's paid. It's a paid internship. Um, it's an opportunity for professional experience. And for us, it bridges us to the community. Um, and we also find that we love interns because we get to learn the most current technologies. So I do have to also say that it is not, um, it's not an online off-site type of job. It is 
um, on site in Princeton, New Jersey. So that leads us to the next slide. So what do you need? What would you need to qualify as an intern? Well, an interest in the medical pharmaceutical area. And we found that when past interns used the internship in their portfolio, they went on successfully to go on to uh, other companies. I believe that all of our interns in the past have been very successful in their career. And then the last slide is my contact information. And again, um, one of the qualifications would be that you'd be either in the central New Jersey area or able to relocate for about three months. So thank you, and that's the end of my presentation. Thank you, Rochelle. I hope I that get to hear. Was, yes, you'll get to hear other presentations, and thank you. That was very interesting. Uh, I live in New York and have been through the Princeton, uh, New Jersey area many times. It's a beautiful place. So if any of you are interested in uh, visiting, this internship would be a perfect opportunity. And now we'll move on to our uh, next presenter, uh, Megan Wong from the Santa Clara County Library District. And uh, Megan, uh, you have the ability to move the slides, and you can take the mic right now and get started. Great. Thank you. Okay, so I'm Megan Wong. I'm the Virtual Library Manager for Santa Clara County Library District. And um, a little about our library. Um, we are headquartered here in lovely Campbell, California. Um, we have seven libraries and one um, branch, Woodland Branch Library. We have a total of circulation of 9,833,000 materials. We answer 352,541 reference questions a year. Um, and we have a population of 410,000 and um, 205 thousand card holders and 1,900,000 items in our collection. Okay, so a little bit about the internship. We are looking for um, a social media intern. Um, it's a virtual internship. Um, it's unpaid. We are pretty flexible with the hours. Um, and the number of credits is totally up to you. Um, so what you'll be doing is managing con our content for um, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Um, you'll also be doing things like helping us develop a six-month social media plan and helping us explore ways to increase users and followers and help <laughs> us develop a deeper, more meaningful connection to our social media community. Um, another thing that you'll be helping us do is develop workflow processes for our social media administrators. So what are you going to walk away with? Um, experience managing our social media content. You'll be helping us develop workflows. Um, you'll be getting mentoring from me, the virtual library manager, and really a great understanding of public libraries, social media procedures, and policies. And I think the best thing that you'll walk away with is the ability to innovate and to test your ideas. Um, so how you'll be helping us? You'll be helping us by staying, helping us stay current and relevant by helping us develop that six-month plan I talked about earlier. Um, you'll also be helping us increase our social media followers and um, helping us manage our content. So our ideal candidate is going to be just a real self-starter, know when to ask questions, know how to think big. Um, and also, we do ask that you have a mobile device because you'll be um, managing our content for some of those social media outlets like Twitter and Instagram that require um, instant responses. Um, and then knowledge just of social media common practices. Our past candidates have been just really innovative and risk takers and just very eager to jump on board. So um, that's about all that I have. Um, you can contact me via email. You can reach out to me um, on Twitter. Um, you can email your resume to me, or um, if you have a CV, that's fine too. Um, but again, just make sure that you are familiar with common practices for Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and YouTube. And that's all I have. Thank you. 
Thank you very much, with, uh, Megan. So if you're interested in this position, it would be wise to become familiar with all of the social media that's listed before you uh, apply and have an interview. And this is the second presenter that mentioned that our students are helping them keep current uh, with the latest technologies. And uh, I was also pleased to hear not only the use of social media, but actually working on a plan, which is really important. So uh, another wonderful opportunity opportunity for someone, and this one was a virtual one. And uh, now we'll move over to Becky Zren from Trinity School, and uh, Becky, you also have the ability to move your slides if you'd like, uh, and you can take the mic right now. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I'm Becky, the librarian at Trinity School. Um, this is my 28th year in the school, my 20th year in the library. Um, for both program and space, which I helped to design and build. Trinity is just the opposite of what you've heard in the last presentation. We're a very small Episcopal day school in the San Francisco Bay Area, halfway between San Francisco and San Jose, with 165 students who thrive on a very broad curriculum uh, with a clear eye on basic skills but enhanced by uh, Lots of um, hands-on knowledge and critical thinking. Oh, thank you. I forgot to click on the arrow. Well, there we go. I'll get the next ones after this. Thank you. Um, and language arts, math, social studies, science, garden, library, Spanish, music, art, physical education, and religious studies. And interestingly enough, um, in the library, I touch on all of these uh, subject categories in different ways throughout the week. The library program fosters a love of reading and it's probably the strength of the program. For a small school, we still have 16,000 items in an online catalog, which shows a commitment to a wide variety of resources for all interests, including our international community and for all re uh, reading levels. The collection is equally divided between fiction and nonfiction. Although the library shelves contain some of the most loved um, beloved classics, we are known in the community for a very strong collection of recently published books. Teachers and students have a say in what books they would like to see in our library. Students write me notes, they stop me on the sidewalk and speak to me personally about what is missing. Um, the library also provides an art cart with supplies, Lego bins, origami paper, which provide additional outlets for students. But it also includes display spaces where we mix books and material culture and projects the students have created on their own. I'm also looking forward in January to expanding the art cart into a maker space. That's a project in transition right now. Uh, information literacy is guided by the American Association of School Library Standards. It's part of our curriculum at every grade level, fully integrated by the teachers and, and I'm work with them closely. Uh, we're guided by Trinity School standards based on the national standards and the common core standards. In addition, all teachers, including myself, are responsible for curricular maps and daily blogs. As a librarian, I'm a very active member in the school at all grade levels. I serve on the diversity committee, curriculum committee, and technology committees. And this year, we are also working and preparing for our 2014 reaccreditation with the California Association of Independent Schools. The library space is a learner space. It's open from 7.30 to 6 p.m. daily. It's sometimes quiet, sometimes very noisy, but always available. Parent support for the library space and the library program has created a shared ownership of the Tang Library. It's probably one of the strengths of my program. The parents, grandparents, au pairs, friends assist in the JK through grade three classes. They organize and present the book fair. They support author and guest presentations. And they also facilitate family literacy nights. In the spring of 2013, Trinity School Library had its first library intern. Thus, obviously, it was so successful that I was thrilled to have an opportunity to present our case and perhaps 
uh, have another intern. Heather was invited to organize as her internship what she would like to do, taking advantage of her strengths and making space for new opportunities for her perceived weaknesses. Together we created a list of goals and near the end we created a list of the many things she had learned as well as her accomplishments. And I also then created my own list of new and updated skills that I learned from her. Our partnership, librarian and intern, brought renewed energy to Trinity School's library program and it was noticeable also by the teachers, some of whom are fairly new here and some who have been here for 15 or 20 years. It also demonstrated for both of us the importance of um, in the library of a subtle program marketing, personal flexibility, shared community investment in the library program and space. I forgot to click on the third slide. So this is just a summary of what I said. We are a one-to-one -one iPad school, grades two through five. Uh, technology is everywhere. All teachers, um, all staff have both iPads and laptops and have run a third round of laptops. So we're very uh, techie oriented um, in all facets. We have smart boards and Apple TV in all our classrooms and yet it's used as a tool. Um, we don't we still read books here. So this is the last slide um, and um, this is really showing some of the engagement of our students um, in our library. This, um, students at Trinity School have many opportunities for leadership, public speaking, actually which I do a fair amount of the public speaking teaching indirectly, and service learning projects. These opportunities nurture character development, compassion, and social responsibility. Students love to come to school every day at Trinity. They love to come to the library and they love to help. Curious about the school library and how it has invested itself in the school community? Please contact me. Um, the contact information is on both the first and last slide and I would be glad to have you schedule a visit or apply for an internship. Thank you very much. Thank you, Becky. What a wonderful community you've developed uh, at Trinity. That is just such a wonderful opportunity for someone who's interested in youth librarianship. Uh, and in addition, we have uh, core competencies our students must meet and uh, being able to develop educational programs is among them. So this would be a wonderful opportunity for anyone wanting to learn more about uh, computer literacy, reaching out to young people. Um, another wonderful opportunity. And next we'll move on to San Mateo County Library. We have two uh, presenters here, but I believe we have one with us this evening, Nicole Pisani. So Nicole, uh, I believe you can move your own slides and uh, I'm going to turn the mic over to you right now and let you describe your internship opportunity. Hi, yes, uh, I'm Nicole Pisani. I'm with San Mateo County Library and um, I manage the libraries in uh, Woodside and Portola Valley, um, but we have uh, 12 branches and a bookmobile throughout San Mateo County. Um, San Mateo County is a really diverse county. Um, we have um, communities that uh, are extremely economically wealthy and extremely uh, economically dis disadvantaged. We have uh, rural communities and urban communities. It, we really run the gamut. Um, and I want to talk to you about uh, internships that we have at multiple sites, um, including my own. Um, I also just really want to stress that um, San Mateo County Library is, I think, a very innovative organization and we really try to support our interns in providing unique and exciting services to our communities and I um, uh, always try to work with interns to, um, you know, allow them to be as creative as, uh, as possible. So here are um, the internships that the, uh, that our library system is uh, has opened this year. Um, our literacy interns work with our Project Read, which provides one-on-one -on -one tutoring to adults. Um, we are working 
uh, right now also on a major website refresh project. Um, so uh, we are looking for a website intern to assist with that. Um, that is a uh, internship that could be um, virtual as well as uh, in person. Uh, we're also um, looking for a digitization intern um, to catalog, scan, photograph, and reframe a collection of historic WPA art. So that's an exciting uh, opportunity to work with some historic pieces. Um, we also have at a um, at our Happen Bay branch an outreach services internship. Uh, opportunity. Hackman Bay is uh, on the coast, obviously, and um, uh, they have a really robust outreach services program and are looking for um, an intern to assist with that. Um, at the, I believe it's at the Atherton Library, they're looking for a volunteer coordinator uh, to help assist with uh, managing volunteers at that branch. We also have youth services focused internships at a couple of our branches, um, basically focusing on um, planning and providing programming for children and um, you know, supporting summer reading um, and uh, doing short times and things of that nature. And we have six public intern public services internships at libraries throughout the county, including my own uh, Portola Valley and Woodside, uh, where interns uh, basically would be able to um, do just about everything that uh, is entailed in working in a public library. Um, so uh, everything from weeding to uh, reference desk customer service work to planning and leading programming. Um, there's just, just a really um, opportunity for a lot of, of different different kinds of work at our different branches. And I think a big opportunity to sort of create your own experience as well. Um, we really like to see interns, you know, um, kind of run with it and take things in the direction that uh, is most, of most interest to them. So for um, our different internships, we have different qualifications. Um, our literacy interns need to have reliable transportation to meet with their students. Um, uh, empathy, flexibility, and patience, and the ability to work with adult learners is definitely helpful. Our digitization intern needs strong computer skills, um, and experience with Drupal and HTML is desired but not totally required. Um, for our outreach services intern, we would love to have someone with um, Spanish language skills, if possible. Um, and for all of our public services internships, I think we're we're looking for people that are you know excited about um, working with the public, who love working with people, who have energy and enthusiasm um, uh, for this kind of work. Um, so this gives you kind of a rundown of the. Um, of the qualifications. You can see more qualifications in detail in the listings on the um, the SLIS internship database. And here's my contact information and um, our deputy director Michael Lambert um, will um, be happy to um, receive your resume and cover letter and references if you'd like to apply for any of our internships. Uh, again, um, you know, we're really uh, looking for folks who are self-starters and excited uh, about designing their own experience. And I'm happy to take any questions uh, at the end. Thanks. Thank you very much, Nicole. And I believe then that you have both on-site and virtual internship opportunities. Yes, that's correct. Uh, the digitization internship can be in-person and virtual, and the website um, in turn can be virtual, but the rest are in person. Thank you. Very interesting. What a wealth of information uh, you provided and so many opportunities for our students. Um, I do hope they take advantage of it. Uh, and now I'm going to move along to um, 
our last presenter for this uh, panel, uh, Robin Hartman from Home uh, Hope International University. And uh, Robin, again, I believe you can move your slides. If you have a problem, let us know. But uh, right now, I'll turn the mic over to you. All right, thank you very much. This has been uh, great to go last because I've learned so much from uh, these other internship opportunities. And I just want to mention that um, even though I was fully um, employed as a librarian when I was going through the library science program myself, I took advantage of doing an internship at a very different kind of library, which was very useful to me to get an idea of what um, things are done, how things are done other places. So it's just really, uh, I think an internship is a wonderful thing. Um, trying to move my slide around, but it's not moving. Let's try it again. There we go. Um, this um, is our the Hugh and Hazel Darling Library, and this is our staff uh, minus our student workforce. Hope International University is a small private university located across the street from Cal State Fullerton. We started as Pacific Bible Seminary in 1928 in Los Angeles and moved to Fullerton in 1974. Our curricular strengths in both graduate and undergraduate levels are in ministry and biblical studies, education, psychology and counseling, and business and management. We have about 200 students, no, 2,000 students with room for 500 in our dorms on campus. And about 50% of our students are online only. Here we go. Still not going when I want it. There we go. Um, so in the uh, we've had many uh, San Jose State University MLIS interns work with us on a number of projects over the years. And although they have focused on uh, completing a finite project, the experience of working in a small library provides an opportunity to see how everything works together and affects every other area. It's like a microcosm of a lar larger system. And seeing how things, uh, changing things on the technical side affect the public services is apparent immediately. And making changes and undoing them uh, can happen very quickly in this kind of environment. So it's kind of exciting. Why am I not moving? There we go. Um, so currently, we are transferring our digital archives to Content DM. Um, we have chapel messages, uh, uh, sermon manuscripts, and a small collection of photos on the digital archives. Um, and you can see that by going to our library site, library.hiu.edu and uh, click on the Find Items tab, and then click on Digital Archives, and that'll show you the old interface. But um, if you want to see what we're doing, moving it to Content DM, you can go to the same site, library.hiu.edu, and find items. But um, click on the chapel messages, and right now that's the only link that goes directly to the Content DM site, but like I said, we're in the middle of transition. And you can see all these uh, collections on Content DM there. Um, but next, we're planning to digitize the university's yearbooks. Our 100th anniversary as an institution will be upon us before we know it, and it will take time to prepare for this celebration. So we think that one thing we can start now is to digitize our yearbooks. And it has been on our to-do list, but our staff is spread pretty thin, so we prioritize things that will make an impact today. So uh, we have already digitized the first eight or nine years. You can see that in the Content DM uh, site. And uh, because they were thin paperbacks that were easy to lay on a flatbed scanner, and the rest of the yearbooks are hardbound between 100 and 150 pages each, and they will take some creativity since we don't have a sophisticated digital imaging equipment. Um, so this will be an exercise in resourcefulness. 
we have extra copies of almost all of these yearbooks and we'll probably destroy them in the process. And uh, we have some ideas, but we think that uh, an innovative uh, intern can really help us with some um, informing our project. So what we want is, is it, this internship is, is partially archival in nature, but I'm not listing it that way since we are not heavily concerned with the physical care of fragile materials. And the project is not to complete the digitization of our yearbooks from the past 60 years. Instead, we need someone to, with the time and skills to set up an ongoing project. We want to be able to recruit and empower volunteers to make meaningful contributions toward the product and so we'll need uh, standards, protocols, and procedures. And at the end of the internship, I hope to have a manual with some examples and um, standard operating procedures as well as recommendations for going forward. And this might include efficient workflow ideas, quality control, um, cost analysis, resource sharing, uh, training, staffing, etc. I want something that our staff can use to hand over to volunteers with minimal supervision. So to apply for this um, internship, send an email expressing your interest in the internship to me and let, let me know if you're interested in doing the internship for credit or not. I can do it either way. So I've had both, um, both kinds. Um, attach a cover letter in PDF format and um, help me to get to know you and give me an idea of your expectations for this internship. Describe the reasons for your interest in the project, such as um, will you, what do you hope to gain from this experience? Do you want to know more about some aspect of digitization? Do you want to hone your project management skills? Do you want to gain familiarity with uh, academic archives. We can help you with any of those things, focus in that area, those areas, uh, or something else. And then uh, what do you bring to the project? What kind of skills? Um, what is your work ethic, uh, creativity? And um, optionally, provide any links to relevant work you've already done. Um, your availability, I need to know how many hours a week you're talking about, interested in doing, and starting when and what schedule restrictions you might have, and attach your resume also, again, in, in PDF format. This is primarily an on-site internship because the yearbooks are physically here, and, uh, but some work can probably be done remotely. So if you have any other questions, uh, any questions, let me know, and uh, thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Robin. That was another very interesting internship opportunity. We have students in the Master of Archives Records Administration degree program as well as in the MLIS program with a concentration in archives and records that would probably love to be involved in some type of digitization uh, project and the ability to uh, get some experience with content DM is very valuable. Uh, I see that quite often on um, job listings, so uh, another very valuable opportunity. I'm going to uh, turn right now to the last page where uh, we are now open for student questions. And uh, those of you who want to ask a question, you see the names of the individuals on the screen in front of you and the school they're from or the uh, a place of business, and if you have a question, you can uh, raise your hand by clicking on the hand icon, uh, and then I'll give you the mic, or else you can type a question in the chat area, and we'll read it for you, and uh, you'll be able to get an answer. So any questions? Michelle, I think you're still on teleconference. There's a question down in the chat for you. Yes, I'm still here. Michelle, I'll read it to you. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I definitely need to read. Miles, Sorry. You, uh, Miles, go ahead. You read it. Thank you. 
<laughs> okay. Uh, when is the annual meeting of international librarians would the intern get to participate? Can you repeat the question again? Sure. When is the annual meeting of international librarians and would the intern get to participate? Oh, okay. International. Um, well, we have we we do uh, we have membership to the Special Libraries Association, and uh, that is a national annual meeting. Um, we do have, though, I, I don't believe that the interns would participate um, in the SLA annual meeting, although you can uh, apply for a scholarship, travel scholarship to go, so you are welcome to do that. Um, there's also, uh, there are, there is a local SLA association that a student could be involved with, and I know that they have them all over the, the nation, but there is one in the local area in Princeton. Um, I'm not really familiar with an international uh, type of professional so meeting. That I, Sorry, Michelle, this is Melissa. I was asking, um, I apologize for the confusion. Um, you had mentioned that you're the, the group of, libra of librarians at Novo Nordisk is an international group and that you guys get together every year. Oh, yes. That's oh, a very I'm still sorry. That I confusing question. <laughs> now I understand it. <laughs> okay. It, you, it's good because we're doing like an, uh, a reference interview. <laughs> um, the student would, would not be able to participate in the physical uh, trip, but definitely with working with the um, international colleagues via uh, IM text and email, and we all work on the same uh, help desk system as well. Um, so yes, the student would at least get to work with um, our, our Denmark uh, counterparts. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for the question. Thank you for clarifying. Do we have any other questions? Yeah, I, I have another question for Nicole. Um, you mentioned the website refresh. And can you, are, are you guys using Drupal? Can you describe the needs a little bit more for that one just for students who are interested? Sure, thanks. Um, Drupal, um, uh, experience using Drupal is uh, desired but not required. Um, if you didn't know Drupal, it would be really helpful to um, uh, know HTML fairly well. I think um, the site supervisor would want someone who could get uh, up to speed using Drupal fairly quickly. So if you feel like um, you don't know Drupal but you're very interested in learning it, it could be a good opportunity for sure. Um, uh, I think they, they would want someone who could be a, a good self-starter in that area and, um, you know, bring, um, work on, on getting up to speed on Drupal. So I think there's some um, flexibility there. Thank you. I'm glad we brought up the uh, Special Libraries Association anyway. It is in um, Vancouver next June, the 8th and the 10th, and there's a link to it. But that brings up the importance of belonging to professional organizations. Does anybody belong to any other organization that you would recommend to the students? Yes, the ACRL and the ALA. Um, uh, two very important ones for uh, academic libraries. I might add that. Yeah, and as I, I had This is Becky. Um, there is a group called Bay Area Independent School Librarians that meets three or four times a year um, that has over 100, 100, 150 members. It varies a little bit from year to year. It's very local but is rich with uh, background information and uh, librarians from other 
walks of life besides independent schools often join us and share in some of the presentations. It's called Basil. Sometimes I find that the local uh, associations provide opportunities that um, you can't really receive by attending a, uh, a national or an international uh, conference, so uh, they're very important. But somebody mentioned international before, and there is an international uh, uh, conference, uh, IFLA, that uh, uh, People from uh, San Jose attend uh, each year. It's usually in uh, other countries. I forgot where it was this past year. I think in France. Uh, but it's a good way to network as well. So if you just do a search on professional associations uh, for librarians or associated information careers, I think you'll come up with a number. Uh, ALA is an important one, at least. I believe uh, some of us are attending in um, January over the break. Uh, do we have any other questions for our uh, presenters? This one is for Megan. Megan, can you read that from the chat area and respond? Yeah, I can read that. Um, so there would not be a standard set of hours, really. Um, it's, I mean, obviously, if a question comes in at 2 in the morning, you're not expected to answer it. but. Um, we do, for Twitter and Instagram, ask um, that our um, social media intern try to stay within, you know, like a 24-hour time frame to respond to um, queries. Any other uh, questions? All right, then what I'd like to do is thank our presenters for sharing their time and their expertise with us this evening. And uh, I hope that you will all consider applying for one of these uh, wonderful internship experiences. Thank you, everyone. And um, that will be it for this evening for this panel. If you intend to stay for the second panel, you could just click on the Away button and come back at about 10 after 7. We'll be starting again at 7.15. Thank you.